This is ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to show you how to play your favorite PlayStation 2 games on your PC using an emulator called PCSX2. And in this video I'm also going to go over upscaling these games to make them look even better. You can go anywhere from 720p, 1080, 1440, and even 4K like you see here. Most PS2 games will benefit greatly from upscaling, but there are a few that just don't come across as good when they're upscaled. Like in my opinion, Devil May Cry 3. So here it is running in standard definition, the default resolution of the original PlayStation 2, and here it is running at 4K. In my opinion, we just didn't get that super jump in fidelity, and it really comes down to per game, but most of the stuff that I tested works really great. Yes, with Devil May Cry 3, the floor's cleaned up, all the jaggies are gone, but in the end, I just don't think it's a super jump from SD to 4K, specifically with Devil May Cry 3. But with others, it's a totally different story. This is Shadow of the Colossus, standard definition, keep an eye on the floor, character models, and background. I'm going to swap over to 4K now. It makes a tremendous difference. Now, it's definitely not the PS4 remastered version, but if you want to play the original PS2 version upscaled, this is a great way to do it. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through installing the emulator, setting up your controller, getting save states and load states working, and then I'm going to go over all the settings that I personally use to get my PS2 games looking the best. I'm going to be using a Windows 10 PC, but this will also work on Windows 7, Windows 8, 8.1, and even Linux. Alright, so let's go ahead and get this set up. First things first, there's a few things you're going to need before we get started. Obviously, you'll need some PS2 games. I can't tell you exactly where to get them. You can rip your own, or you can search Google, and you'll find everything you need. Now, they do widely range in sizes. As you can see, Devil May Cry 3 was 4.3 gigabytes, and Gran Turismo 4 is 5.1, but we have Shadow of the Colossus sitting at 2.6. These are known as ISO files, or you can call them disk image files. And the next thing you'll need is the PS2 BIOS. This is very important to get these games up and running. I use the Japanese BIOS file known as scph10000.bin. You can search for PS2 BIOSes. And finally, you'll need a controller. You could play this with a keyboard if you want to, but I highly suggest getting a controller that's compatible with your PC. I use an Xbox One controller connected over Bluetooth, but if you have a PS3, PS4, or an Xbox 360 controller, it'll work perfectly for this. And before we jump right into the installation process, I want to go over the minimum and the recommended specs listed on their website. So for the minimum specs, OS, Windows 7, or Linux, your CPU, anything that supports SSE2 at 1.6 GHz. A GPU that supports DirectX 10 and 2 gigs of RAM, but this is going to be unplayably slow, and they mention it on their website. So the recommended specs to get this up and running, Windows 10, 64-bit, a Core Series Haswell or Ryzen CPU at 2 GHz or better, a GPU that supports DirectX 11, and 4 gigs of RAM. And from my experience, I actually recommend something at about 3 GHz, an Intel Core Series, third generation or higher, or a Ryzen first gen on up. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get this installed. All links for everything mentioned will be in the description. First things first, let's download the emulator. We're getting PC SX2. We can head right here to Downloads, Windows. Now these are the stable releases, but I personally prefer using the development releases. There's more fixes in here, and Ratchet and Clank actually works really well with the development build. This is what I'm going with, and I kind of recommend it. This is 1.5, or you can get the stable release, which is 1.4, but the release is pretty old. These are regularly updated. I'm going to go here for the development build. This was released five days ago as of making this video download, and we'll get the latest one. Next thing we'll need is some extraction software. I recommend WinRAR. I already have mine installed, but the link is in the description. I'm going to go ahead and grab the emulator, place it right on my desktop, right-click, extract. Now the first thing I'm going to do is go right into this folder that we just extracted, and I'm going to create a new folder called BIOS. It'll do it automatically, but we can go ahead and get that out of the way. Folder, BIOS. Inside of this BIOS folder that we just created, we're going to place our PS2 BIOS. I'm using the scph10000.bin. So now we have our BIOS installed. We're going to back up, 
I recommend creating a shortcut for this. So I right click, create shortcut, and I place it on my desktop. So now we can just start it up from the desktop. It's going to give us a little configuration walkthrough. Language selector, I leave it at system default, but you can choose your language from here. Next, these are the plugins we're going to be using. The only one that I change inside of here is this top GS version. At the very bottom here, I use the newest one, SSE4. Now that's because my CPU will support it, and most newer chips will. If you're using, let's say, a first generation Intel Core, choose SSE2. But I'm going to go with SSE4 and select Next. We already installed our BIOS. It's going to automatically choose it for us. We'll click Finish. So the initial configuration is done. PC SX2 is installed properly. We can actually start using it right now. But there are some settings that I'd like to go over and kind of explain. Now I always go ahead and set up my controller first. So from the config tab, we're going to find controllers, plugin settings, pad one. I'm using an Xbox one controller. And if you have a PS3, PS4 and Xbox 360 controller connected, it's automatically going to detect it as long as you're using windows, you can choose quick setup, or we can just come right over here and set the buttons up manually. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Here's our shoulder buttons. I'll choose L1 and I'll press the corresponding button on my controller. L2, R1, R2, and so on and so on. As you can see, it's really easy to set up. D-pad, up, down, left, right, face buttons, select, start, analog sticks. Once you have this configured, Click apply and your controller is now set up. Now it's time to move over to the emulation settings. Config emulation settings. So there's a lot to go over in this section here, but they've actually made it really easy with the presets. Now there are certain games where you will have to turn preset off and go through and find exactly what you need, but there's tutorials listed online for that. Basic setup for I'd say 98% of all the PS2 games that are compatible with PC SX2 I use the preset of safe. If we hover over this, it's going to give us a brief description. Safest, no speed hacks. This is the most reliable, the most accurate that you're going to get. Safe is the default setting with a few speed hacks known to provide boost in performance. Now I will say if you're on a lower end machine, you could actually run some of these games at full speed by going on up, but you will run into some issues. There's lots of hacks going on. You'll have some frame skipping, shadows won't look right. So I recommend staying as close to safe or balanced. Personally, I always use safe, the default setting. We'll click apply and OK. Now we need to move over to upscaling. Config, video, plugin options. This section here can make or break PS2 emulation on your system. So the renderer, I prefer using OpenGL hardware, but if you have a lower end GPU, go with DirectX 11. See, it changes up here. It's going to use the DirectX 11 backend from your GPU to help in performance. I'm going to go with OpenGL. This will be the most accurate. Our internal resolution, 720p, 1080, 1440, all the way up to 5K. For this machine here, I always choose 4K. I also throw on some filtering, about 4 to 8. MIP mapping, basic fast. CSR hack level, partial, because I'm using OpenGL. If you're using DirectX 11, you can go with full. Now, if you do experience any issues going with this 4K setting, drop it down. Drop it all the way down to 720 and then move up from there. While you're playing a game, you can actually mess with these settings and see it change in real time. Date accuracy, leave it at default. Blending accuracy, I choose medium. And these are the exact settings I use to run my PS2 games at 4K. Choose OK, and we can actually start a game right now, but I do want to go over save states. Up here under system, load state is going to be F3, save state is going to be F1. You can also just come right back to this menu while you're in gameplay and select to load or save from right here. Now this emulator is set up in windowed mode right out of the box. We can set it up to go full screen every time we start a game, or you can just double click on the game screen when you start up a game. If you want to enable full screen when you start, go back to config, emulation settings, GS window, default to full screen mode, 
on Open. Every time you start a game, it'll go full screen. Click Apply and OK. Now all that's really left to do is start a game. We're going to go to C, DVD, ISO Selector, Browse, and I'm going to choose my location of my PS2 games on my desktop in a folder called PS2 Games. We're going to go to Ratchet & Clank. We now need to start the game. System. I always boot fast. If you boot full, it'll go through the BIOS. So boot ISO fast. And we're now playing PS2 upscaled to 4K or 720, 1080, 1440, whatever your PC can handle. I just skipped into a little bit of gameplay to give you a look. Now if you double click on the window with your mouse, it'll go window mode. There's one thing I want to show you real quick. We're at 4K. I'm going to swap it on the fly. So if we go down here to our menu, config, video, plugin settings, I'm going to go back to the native resolution and just take a look. So yeah, upscaling these PS2 games definitely makes a big difference on most of them that I've tested. I'll go back up, config, video, plugin settings, and we'll take it back to 4K. Cleans that whole image up and it just looks absolutely amazing. You can also save from here, like I showed you. Save, F1, I'm gonna go with slot one. If I wanna load it, it'll load me right back. Or we can use the hotkeys. F3 to load, F1 to save. Double click, it'll bring you back into full screen mode and you can start playing. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I really appreciate you watching. I hope you can get PS2 up and running on your PC, at least at a little upscale level of 720p. It definitely does make a big difference. There's one last thing that I want to show you before we get out of here, but if you make a change in any of the options and you don't know what you changed, you can always go back to default by going to Config, Clear All Settings. This will bring it back to the default settings, and you can start over from there. Really appreciate you guys watching. All links for everything mentioned in this video are in the description. I've recently done a couple other videos on showing you how to get PS1 upscaled to 4K, N64, and even GameCube. I'll leave links for those down below in case you want to check those out. But like always, thanks for watching.